Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this Family Bible Study Hour. Back in our Father's Word, Song of Moses today. You know, I cannot impress upon you how important this song is. There is so much in it. And I, I want you to remember back we were doing chapter 31, what the 19th verse said. It's good for you to remember it. Now, therefore, write ye this song for you, this is God speaking to Moses, and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouth that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Keep them in line. Very important. And you'll remember as it stated in verse 30 as we completed that 31st chapter, and Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. What makes this song so very important? Because what are you instructed in Revelation chapter 15? At the very end, chapter 14 is written to earth. Chapter 15 in Revelation is written to heaven and the very host of heaven and those that make it. If you don't know this song, that is to say, if you do not align with the doctrine and the teachings that are in this song, you're not going to make this. Let's document it. Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. That's the, the whole thing. Verse 2, and I saw, as it were, a sea of glass, that's perfection, mingled with fire, cleansing. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, you got that? Those that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, they understood it clearly, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. You want to be in that crowd if you want to make it. That's God's elect with armed and loaded with the Song of Moses. And they sing the Song of Moses, the servant of God, and the Song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thy King of saints, that's to say of the nations. How precious it is. And that's why this song is so very important. It's God's feeling towards His people. Information that you must know concerning the enemy, what it is you're to do, and so forth. Let's get with the song. Song of Moses, chapter 32, the great book of Deuteronomy, being in the Hebrew name, these are the words. And boy, are they. Listen to them. Verse 1, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Verse 2, my doctrine, that's like, thy good teachings, will drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Do you know what happens to your lawn and your crops, your garden, when that ten, tender rain falls on it, makes it grow. And, and the dew is where natural um, nitrogen and that first rain that germinates the seed. What he's saying here, if you'll listen to my word, if you'll let this early rain and the latter rain fall on your ear and you'll absorb it, you'll grow also. You'll grow mightily in the service of the king. Verse 3, Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. There is no greater. Okay? And you cannot ascribe any name 
uh, to that magnifies with our Father who created all things. You know, man is barely being able to creep around in the heavens and begin to learn a little about what is out there. He put it there. Verse 4, He is the rock. You'll notice that's uppercase. He is the rock. His work is perfect. And all his ways are judgment, that is to say, justified in doing what's right, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. Now, this word rock in the uppercase will be utilized five times in this psalm. God is our rock. Do you know what that means? It means he's unchangeable. You can count on the rock and, um, and how precious it is that and naturally, five times stands for grace, unmerited favor. He loves you. That's why he created you different than anyone else. He loves you. Verse 5. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and a crooked generation. And, and certainly... And so it is. Do you know where that's also written in the little book of Jude? Right before the book of Revelation. And verse 13, if I remember correctly. Uh, and um, verse 12 it is. They are spots in your feast of charity. Do you know who they are? When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, empty, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, never producing anything successful. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. In other words, it's talking about the sons, the children of Cain, Kenites in the Hebrew tongue. They're just not like us. They're different. There is one thing that can change that. If they partake of what was spoken of in the prior verse, that if they partake of that rock, the true rock, not the fake, for there is a fake rock. If they partake of that true rock, then they become children of God, not of Cain. So to know and to understand that perverse generation will keep you out of a lot of trouble. This, this, is, this is what was taught in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, to Smyrna and Philadelphia, the two churches of truth, those who knew who those were that claimed to be of our brother Judah and did lie and were of the synagogue of Satan. That's why God complimented those two churches because that was the key of David. That's the key that unlocks truth and no man can shut that door your ear to that truth. How precious it is to know and to understand the Word of God. Verse 6. Do ye thus requite the Lord? Um, o foolish people, this word requite is a good male. It means to wean yourself away from Him. You know, do you, do you want to do that? Do you want to wean yourself away from God and, not, and lose His blessings? Do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people, and unwise? Is not he thy father thou hast brought, that hath brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Quana in the Hebrew tongue, meaning he erects you, he created you, he procured you. Hey, he owns you. Your soul belongs to him. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. All souls belong to God. You don't get around to giving your soul to God. He's got you. Okay. Verse 7. Remember, you stop and think. Remember the days of old and consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. You know, it is true that gray hair is supposed to bring wisdom, but I know not all gray-headed people have the truth, and you have to be careful. We've got six-year-olds in our congregations that know more Scripture and know more of God's Word than a 
many that are gray-headed. Why? Because they study God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse and pay attention to what our Father says rather than what some man might say. That is what is most important. Verse 8, when the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when He separated the sons of Adam, you know, many of your newer translations will translate this word Adam as men. False. Wrong. It takes away from the Word of God because it is eth ha Adam. Though that generation, that uh, offspring through which Christ would come, He set the bounds, that's to say the boundaries, of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. And it was, this was the people that would carry forth the truth at all costs. It would never change. Traditions of men would never affect them. They would hold true to the real truth of God's Word and teach it just as this song is taught and as we remembered back from chapter 31, verse 19, Now therefore write ye this song for you, and you teach it. Don't you forget it. He set the bounds whereby there would be no crossover in the birth of Jesus Christ. Verse 9, that's the key of David. It's part of the church of Philadelphia that you must know, as it is written in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Verse 9, For the Lord's portion is His people. Out of all that He created, what is His portion? His people. Jacob is the lot of His inheritance. That is the, the, the child through which that cord, that line, would bring forth Messiah. In other words, Emmanuel, God with us, God Himself coming through that people. That's why it's so very important. This lot or this cord, in other words, there was a division in the lot cast. That's where our term today, city lot, comes from when you partial out land. Verse 10, He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. Do, do you know what the apple of your eye is? The apple of your eye is the very pupil of your eye. God protects you the way he would the pupil of his own eye. That's why the eye, when God created these bodies, you blink in a nanosecond to protect the pupil from dust, particles, insects, whatever might be coming your way. That's the way God feels about you. That's what he's talking about. So many people would be so ignorant that they would say, I just wish God would hear my prayers. God takes care of his own as protecting the pupil of his eye. Why? He loves you. May not love what you're doing, but he does love you. That's why he created you different than anyone else. Your DNA is different. Your fingerprints are different. He wanted somebody just like you. And that's the length he goes to when you're in his service and when you're under the grace of his mighty name. He does protect his own. As what? Verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. In other words, when God mentions um, nature like this, you want to learn from it. And it's better yet if you can actually see it transpire. This is the way a mother eagle teaches her little ones. This is the way God teaches you, is by ab act actual happenings. This mother eagle fluttereth over the nest to encourage the little ones to fly when they're ready. Okay, and she knows when they're ready. And at the same time, those that are not ready, she, that are, uh, are weak, she takes care of. She'll carry them on that wing. And I know some people dis would, might disagree with that, be that as it may. But that's why God would use this particular analogy to let you know he wants to teach you. 
He wants to teach you how to fly, spiritually speaking, your mind into the truth and the depths and the mystery of His Word. How precious it is when you enjoy studying our Father's letter to you, giving you that instruction and that teaching. He flutters over you in that Holy Spirit urging you, guiding you, looking over you, protecting you, guarding you as the pupil of his own eye. Verse 12, So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. When, when Jacob went forth, when the children were even in the wilderness, he led them at night by a pillar of fire. He led them in the daytime by a cloud that would protect them from <clears throat> that heat. He fed them manna. He took care of them. And at that time, there was no strange God. When Moses would go up on Mount Sinai, they, they would build their own. 13. He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty, flinty rock. Uh, and, and so it is. This means the very fruit of the land, the uh, organic minerals that we partake of <clears throat> from the very soil itself, for our bodies came from the clay to strengthen and uh, to, um, to increase. Uh, the um, tenuhae is the fruit of the very land being the increase. Verse 14, butter of kine, that's a cow's butter, <clears throat> and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan. That means fruitful, huge. And goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. And what is that? That means uh, pure means unmixed. <clears throat> and what is unmixed? That is the, the wine from the very plant itself. And the, the grape juice, if you so desire, that is the one we would take Holy Communion with, and it is what Christ would present the first miracle. Verse 15. You want to listen carefully. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art growing thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock, uh, that solid rock, unchangeable rock of his salvation. Jeshurun is a poetic name for Israel. Okay. It, means, um, it, it, it means upright is what it means. But it, it means a good time Charlie. I mean, when, when God blesses and overblesses, when we earn it, there is a certain ilk that will go from that. And, and uh, when times are good, they forget God. And they're going to party. They're going to have a good time. And God knows it. That's what he's talking about here. His own children. Those that he has so loved and taken care of. That's why this song of Moses is so very important. Don't you dare fit that mold of Jeshurun. You avoid it and save yourself a lot of trouble. <clears throat> I don't care if you are really blessed and you have an abundance. You better remember where it came from. It wasn't you. It was God. For he looks over you, guards you, protects you as the pupil of his eye. And you better thank him for it and keep God foremost in your mind <clears throat> rather than forgetting him and turning to the traditions of men. 16, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods and abominations provoked they him to anger. Our father's jealous and he, 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 um, he has a temper. When, when you go to perversion and when you pervert what he has given us with such, such um, willingness, such freely given to us, to take it and turn it 
to something not good, you better get ready for it. He's jealous and he takes vengeance. Why? It's, it's to straighten your case out so you don't go to hell. Verse 17, they sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that come newly up, whom your fathers feared not. They, they just didn't care. They, you know, how many people do you know that claim to be Christian preachers and they never get around to teaching the word of Christ, which is this word. Christ became the living word and walked among us. They claim to be Christian preachers, but you'll rarely ever hear them teach the Old Testament, especially and rarely the New. <clears throat> and people follow them. I'm not judging anyone, but if you're going to study God's Word, study God's Word, not traditions of men. Only a fool would follow traditions above the Word of God. Well, why would, why would that be? Because you wouldn't have any blessings. And in this troubled time, and in this world, you need God's blessings. 18, of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. And there's that uppercase rock again, unchangeable, and has forgotten God that formed thee. You, you, you've turned your back on the rock. You had solidity in your life and responsibility and you turned your back on it. Just you run dead. Good time, Charlie. 19, and when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. In other words, uh, <coughs> uh, the um, misleading and leading astray apostasy, if you would, taking our, his children into apostasy, losing touch with the true God, pulling them away from the Word of God. You know, many men would say to you, claiming to be Christian preachers, you don't have to understand the book of Revelation. You're going to be gone. If you would listen to some idiot that would tell you you don't have to understand God's Word, then you'd listen, you can be had e real easy. You're, you're not very, you're, you're, your elevator doesn't quite top out, my friend, because God sent this letter to you, all of it, for you to have a gauge and a, and a rule to go by whereby he could bless you. <clears throat> Verse 20, and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. This word froward is perverse. Okay. And anytime you pervert something that is natural away from God's way, it's perversion. 21, and they moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. You can read of that in Amos chapter 6, verse 14. It's called Arabah, which is to say, before the very end, I'm going to let the Kenites have a little play with you. That, that means uh, braided, mixed, or at the end of the day. That's what the word means in the Hebrew tongue. 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn into the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. You know, God spoke and nothing became what it is today. He can also speak. He is a consuming fire and something can become nothing. 23, I will heap mischiefs upon them. I, God speaking for himself, I will spin mine arrows upon them. You're gonna get, you're gonna get it. 24, they shall be burnt with hunger 
and devoured with burning heat, a fever because of lack of an immune system. Eaten up. That's why you want to make sure that forward generation, perversiveness, doesn't come. That's the promise in the Song of Moses. And with bitter destruction, I will also send the teeth of beast upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. In other words, Satan's own little troopers are going to have their way with you, taking you to the very depths of hell. 25. The sword without and terror within, the very chambers itself, shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. If you, you listen, you know, Christ, what is the sword of the Lord? You can read of it in Revelation chapter 1, verses 15 through 16. It's Christ's tongue. It's a two-edged sword. It's sharp. It cuts both ways. But Satan also has a sword of lies, deception, he will take you to the very bottom of the pit if you follow him. <clears throat> See that you don't. It will destroy families. Whole families going down the drain. 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Uh, that is to say, wh where are they? God promised that the nation Israel, not talking about Judah. We know where Judah is, basically. <clears throat> but the nation Israel, where is it? Numerous as the sands of the sea and the stars of heaven. Uncountable. Where are they? <clears throat> and of course, they are hidden because they were taken 200 years before the house of Judah into captivity by the Assyrian over the Caucasus Mountains, later being called Caucasians, Celts, and Saxons. Do you know what Saxons are? Isaac's sons. 27. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their, their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. The enemy is saying, we've overcome them. We have just moved into their own offices and taken over their government. And they don't know any better. We, we, really, we really put them down. We want to be careful there, my friend. 28. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. In other words, wisdom goes out the window if you cut off the word of God because all wisdom comes from God. There is no way, and you let a bunch of heathen run around placing signs on buses. It's laughable, and you should laugh at them. I mean, that's how stupid they are that God doesn't exist when any child can feel the presence of Almighty God. It is, it's no step for a stepper at all. So you, don't, you want to really laugh at those, the heathen, that bring forth billboards and other publisher, publishings saying there isn't a God because they're void of wisdom inasmuch as all wisdom comes from God. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. You know, it is an amazing thing. When I say laugh at them, I get more bad letters from them. They, can, they want you to be uncomfortable with their little signs. And when you get a kick out of them and laugh at them, it upsets them terribly. They blew their money for, so that we can laugh at them. They don't think it's funny when we take that back at them because Christians don't have to worry about anything. We don't give up land. We take it. <clears throat> Let the heathen rage. It's all the good it'll do them. Laugh at them. 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Going to hell. <clears throat> Verse 30, excuse me. 
How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? But still yet one of God's elect that understands the key of David, the truth of God's word, loving the rock, our rock, and the mercy and the grace that is connected with it, we can put 10,000 to flight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 31, for their rock, you'll notice this is lowercase, for their rock is not as our rock, uppercase, even our enemies themselves being judges. You don't have to be a very shrewd person to know who's greater, God or Satan. For their rock is, the rock in the Hebrew tongue is Tyrus. And King Tyrus, as it is written in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 18 and 19, is turned to ashes, though he was the cherubim that covereth at one time. Going down. You want to go down with him? Then say there isn't a God. And then you'd understand why we laugh at you. Verse 32. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall and their clusters are bitter, perversion, forwardness that goes against the true way of God. 33, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asp, the serpent people. This is why Jesus would call them, if you really have eyes to see and ears to hear, in Matthew chapter 23, when he would say, you are the offspring of the serpent. What he was saying, you are the generation, meaning you are that people. 34, is not this laid up in store with me, God speaking, and sealed up among my treasures? You think it's not going to happen? Stick around, friend. It's well underway. We're in that generation of the fig tree. Our Father is observing. And He's coming soon. And then you'll understand why I say laugh at those that would mock Him. Because really it's kind of a pitiful case. Don't miss the next lecture. You need to know the rest of this song. It gets better as we go. All right, God bless you. You listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And there we are back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. Hey, you know what? That number is good from Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii. Hey, all over Canada. If the spirit moves and you have a question, you share it. Won't you do that? Please never ask a question pertaining a reverend, denomination, or church organization. We don't judge people. I know it may sound judgmental, but that's God who is the judge not man. You teach God's word and let the chips fall wherever they may. Never, ever apologize for the word of God. It saves souls. It saves people. It remakes the lost into something precious, the people of God. Don't ever forget that. Those of you that listen by short wave around the world, it's always a pleasure hearing from you. And your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. Again, always a pleasure. Got a prayer request? You don't need our number. 
You don't need an address. You know why? Because God knows what you're thinking. And what he is thinking is that he loves you and he wants to hear from you. Let him know that you love him. Return it and be blessed. Father, around the globe we come. We ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father. Touch in Yeshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, and question time. Uh, Debbie from Wisconsin, do you have any Bible study for children? We're trying to teach our grandchildren and need some help. Um, uh, God's natural way is uh, discovering, God's natural truth. discovering God's natural truth is a little children's book that is fantastic. A lot of a lot of uh, adults need to have it. But you'll find it in our, our bookstore, okay, that you can order it from here. Fantastic work. Uh, Nancy from New Mexico, what distinguishes a truly discerning Christian from a judgmental one or a, de a deceiving Christian from a hyper-critical uh, person? It may seem to be splitting hairs rather than clarifying until one finds oneself out on the front lines trying to see past the smoke screens. Well, it, it's really quite easy. That's why we're fishermen for men. And you fish for men the same way that you would for fish. Well, how do you fish for fish? Well, you don't throw anchors at them. You don't set off sticks of dynamite. You throw out something that's tempting. And if they take the bait, you pull them in. If they don't take the bait, you let them go. God did not assign anyone to be the savior of the world aside from Christ himself. So in planting seeds, only God can make them grow. Man cannot. So it's really quite simple. A discerning person simply plants a seed when it's obvious God would want you to and, and drop it right there. That's all you do. Plant the one seed and walk away. It, it would seem that some people want to let that ignorant person know everything you know. And you just dump the whole thing on them and they're going to run from you. You're wasting your time. And so true discernment is to fish for men. If they take the bait, then continue. If they don't, end of, end of story. God knows how to save people. He just uses us to assist. Yogesh from Georgia <clears throat> Why would there be giving and taking in marriage as in the days of Noah prior to the appearance of the false Christ since the birth of Christ had already occurred? Why would the fallen angels want to commit these? They're, they're crude. Have you never read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10, where Paul tells a woman to keep her Christ over her head? It says covered. A lot of people think that means a hat or a veil. I'm not talking about that. It's talking about keep Christ over her head because of what? Verse 10, because of the angels. They're coming back. And uh, that's where they left their first habitation was to seduce women. They're going to be doing the same thing again. That's what Christ said in Matthew 24. Uh, Leaguer from Louisiana. My question is Lucifer Satan being one of the stars. <clears throat> well, the, the word, you know, Satan is a copyist. This is why Christ is Christ and he is Antichrist. He wants to be Christ. Christ is the morning star. He calls himself the morning star. Okay. He copies everything pretending to be Christ, and it's going to deceive a lot of people. The name Lucifer in the Hebrew tongue means bright star. And if you read the 38th chapter of the great book of Job, all of God's children in the first earth age were called stars. Okay. I mean, they were God's children. Okay. Each one in his own way. That's not to say they were literally stars. 
but they were children of God called that. And naturally, the leader of those children would be the morning star. That's the first, first light. Christ is our first light, certainly not Satan. Satan is a copyist. Velma from New Jersey, Pastor Murray, in Genesis, when Eve took the fruit from the tree, was it an apple? Have you ever read the Bible? No way. It doesn't say she took an apple. That's taught in Sunday schools, misleading little children. They were in a fig grove, so naturally they couldn't have taken an apple. Well, how do you know they were in a fig grove? What did they cover themselves with? It wasn't apple leaves, it was fig leaves. Therefore, even to this day, what is the fig leaf symbolic of? Hidden ones. <clears throat> And did they cover their mouth where they had eaten an apple? No, they covered their private parts where the very act of Satan, as it is written by Jesus Christ in teaching Matthew chapter 13, beginning with verse 36, down to telling who the tares are and what they did to women. Uh, Pastor Murray, this is Sim from Florida. I have a daughter that I love very much, it is with a young man. He's lying and cheating and trying to play this family. I love my daughter very much. I take her to the Bible and tell her about evil spirits that Satan uses people to do his work also. She believes everything he tells her. I hope that this letter will get on your program and let her hear from a man of God about Satan's spirits. Well, I, you know, not judging, but if he does lie, that's what Satan is a liar and a thief and he will steal the girl's life if she lets him. So if the person, a young man, if he wants to make a, a um, hit with a, a girl, young lady, then he should talk Bible. He should talk God's Word. He should never lie to her, and I'm afraid he's picked the wrong family to try to take it to play because Papa's not going to let him. He's going to tell him where the cow eat the cabbage. Ray from Illinois, be gentle in doing so. Ray from Illinois, what day of the week do you say that Jesus was crucified on? On a Wednesday. He was crucified on Wednesday and he was placed in the tomb at sundown, which that began Thursday. He was in the tomb all Thursday till Friday evening which that begins then uh, until th Thursday evening, rather, which began Friday, and then Friday evening, which begins Saturday, and then sometime in the night he resurrected, three, and a, three days plus. Uh, your companion Bible has an appendix that gives you almost hour by hour play on that. Uh, Jessica from New York. I'm 10 years old and I watch your program each morning with my parents. My question is, what is the difference between a pastor and a priest? Why can't a priest be married and pastors can't? Thank you for your program, we love it. Well, we, we would be talking, you know, some priests can marry in various religions, but there are certain religions that, that they are celibate. That's, that is the choice of that church. Um, it is natural that, um, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, that um, it's all right for a pastor to have a family. Okay. You know, in, in Christ's times and in Paul's times, we did not have the modern convenience such as television whereby you could be at home every night and still teach all the way around the world. Uh, they would be gone from home months and months and years at a time which made it very difficult to have a family. And um, that's why Paul would say it's better <clears throat> that you, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it's better that you be like me, unmarried, but rather than burn, it's better to marry. Burn means with passion, not going to hell, okay? If you can't handle that, then you should get married, period. Elizabeth from Virginia, how do you know when a yes or wait from God rather than can you tell if God the Father is saying yes or no or wait? Thank you. 
I sure can, Elizabeth. You know, what you do, you pray a lot, and you let the Spirit give you unction, and you go with that unction. If it doesn't work out, what he was saying was no. If it does work out, and it is a blessing, then he said yes. But you always want to wait until the unction comes where you pretty well know you have the answer. But at the same time, you want to be, there's only one way things get done, and that's to get about it. Okay, so it's according to uh, whatever the situation is or whatever. God will let you know whether it's right or wrong. Ronald from California, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, the word spirit is lowercase in some Bibles, uppercase in others. Since God does not tempt us, then it must not be the Holy Spirit that led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. No, um, every individual has a spirit. Okay. Christ's spirit just so happens to be the Holy Spirit okay, because it's the spirit of God. But it's still, when it is used singular, it was his own unction or spirit. You know, you have a spirit. I have a spirit. My spirit is, is um, my intellect that assists me in teaching God's Word or to convey the beautiful thoughts in the Word of God. That's my spirit. But it is, that is, the, that is the unction and the thought process of every entity. They have a spirit. That's not to take away from the Holy Spirit, but in that case, it's letting you know that Christ willingly, openly, and definitely, inasmuch as he showed us how to get it done, said, Satan, bring it on. I can, I can handle it. And boy, did he. Uh, Brandy from Georgia, um, I, have all, I have a question for you. The first, how do you plant seeds? And the second, if you have a learning disability, can you still be one of God's elect? Of course you can. God uses whomever he will. He chooses whomever he will. If you can see the truth and, and you know that the false Christ comes first and you're going to stand against him, it isn't you that speak. It's Christ that speaks through you when you're delivered up. So certainly a learning disability is not going to bother you in that case as long as you know the truth and uh, stick with it. How do you plant seeds? Like I said earlier, you fish for people. You throw out the bait, and if they take it, you reel them in. If they don't, it's over. Uh, James from California, what side of the gulf will I go on? Well, uh, James, I'm sorry, I don't know your actions. How, how could I judge that? You're the one that must judge that. Whatever you do determines which side you go on. If you love the Lord God, if you believe upon his son, you're going to go to the, and you try to serve him. That is to say, plant a seed occasionally and so forth. And you study the good word. You're going to be on the right side of the gulf. Sue from Indiana. I heard you say something only last for five months in the millennium. Could you explain what you were talking about? Not the millennium. It's just before the millennium, as it's written in Revelation chapter 9, that Satan, and, and his name is given in both the Greek and the Hebrew, so you couldn't, you couldn't go wrong. He made it so definite as to who he was talking about that um, Apollyon and Abobdon, the destroyer, Satan, will only have five months to deceive the people when God's elect are delivered up before him. Only five months. And at the end of that five months begins the millennium. Uh, Roy from Colorado. A question. I struggle with the idea that we should love everyone unconditionally which I hear a lot of people saying, church and religious people. It seems God loves us if we believe that. That's not true. You know, 
you, we love everybody unconditionally. However, there comes into that tough love. If you truly love your enemy, let, let's take the teachings of God. Always let that override everything. God said, if you love your child, you're not going to spare the rod. You're going to correct him. Okay. You can read of that even in Hebrews chapter 12 in the New Testament. God corrects you if he loves you. And it's the same way. If you love your enemy, you're going to give him an attitude adjustment. And it may take a two before. It may take however big of toys he likes to play with. Okay, That's the way you judge it. And that's called tough love. But most of all, we don't let Satan's very choice destroy our people. <clears throat> we dispatch them. We have a great hurt in this nation at this time that we are allowing terrorists to practically destroy a whole plain load of our people and then let some judge say, whether you plead guilty or not guilty, instead of turning him over to the CIA and putting him on a waterboard and find out where he came from, who he's doing business with, and how to handle it militarily. It's not a judicial situation. And this country is going to lose this war if this continues. You can't read the enemy the Miran their Miranda rights because they're not American citizens. They want to kill us. So if you love them, you have to act and react accordingly. You know, if you are sick and you got a joint out of place, you go to a chiropractor. If you have an appendix about to rupture, you go to a surgeon. If you have a terrorist that's a trying to destroy innocent civilians, the first duty of our government is to protect the citizens of this nation. And that's why we have an army. That's why we have the Marines. That's why we have the CIA, Air Force. We have all kinds of tools to use against to win the war rather than to let a bunch of slick lawyers play court when they are so ignorant when it comes to handling a situation like that that we're going to lose if it continues on. The terrorists laugh at us when we do not take appropriate measures to find out who they're connected with and get to it. And I know that some will say, well, I've never heard a preacher talk like that. Well, you have now. And I'm a very patriotic American. I'm an old combat Marine. I know how to take care of business. Been there, done that. And I hate to see this nation lose everything it's got because of some slick lawyers trying to play uh, CIA. They haven't got it. They're too ignorant. It is not that they are ignorant. It's just that's out of their line of work. They do not know what they're dealing with, period. Okay, enough said. Okay, I have a question, and who is this? This is uh, Juliet from Arizona. I have a question, Zechariah 5, 9, the two women who... What indicates the two women? Pray for me and my family. You've got that. And the two women take the ephah or basket that old sister Babylon's sitting in and take her up and play between heaven and earth and try to get people to worship her. They are, the two women are as stark, and a stark is a very unclean bird. Okay, that, that answers your question. Brad from Tennessee. Explain to me the fig tree and do you believe that Israel when... It became a state and given to be a named state in the, I think it was 1947. Does this mean that all generations born after this were named a state? Well, it, it, has, it has to do with the generation of the fig tree, and that's the final generation. That's, that's what it means. Uh, study the parable of the fig tree. Uh, Donna from California, my question, is the fallen angels who left their habitation to seduce the daughters of Adam did these angels have male sex organs and the ability to produce sperm? 
What, what was Adam created in the image of? God and the angels. And um, was Adam able to uh, uh, produce? Because it's the exact image. And the answer is, of course, yes, they did have. They're not flesh, but we are made in the exact out of flesh material that they are in heavenly material, spiritual material. And here's another one from this same Donna. My question is, how many of Noah's wives were, went on the ark with him? If it was only one, was Ham's, bio, was, yes, it was Ham's biological mother because Noah only had one wife. Okay. And I got another one from this Donna. My question pertains to the six-day creation. Did God make one male, one female of every race? Of course he did. Okay, that's why we have our races with them. God created them on the sixth day and he looked and it was good. God is proud of the races. He loves them. Uh, Brenda from California. I have heard that fear is an evil spirit. To be afraid is to call the Lord a liar because he will not leave you alone to do this battle. The Lord is always with us. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But fear is not an evil spirit. Okay. I want you to make a home assignment. Luke chapter 10, verses 18 and 19. Start reading there and know that God gives you power over all your enemies. In Christ's name, use it. Being out of time, I must say to you, I love you because you enjoy studying our Father's Word chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Most of all, God loves you for it. You make his day, guess what? He's going to make yours. Brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless God again. He will always bless you. Most important though, you listen to me, listen good. You stay in his word every day. And his word is a good day, even with trouble. Do you know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, is the living word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800 643 4645 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel. Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.